Hello everyone, I'm back again. Welcome back to my channel. This is part two of our hardcover book uh, journal making where we dissect a book and uh, repurpose it into a journal. So in part one, I showed you how to basically take apart the books. Uh, the two methods were to uh, completely gut the book and take all the pages out. And the second method was to use your X-Acto blade and just cut away pages that uh, about every uh, four pages or keep one page, cut out four throughout the book. And that's two methods. And then I came across a situation in one of my other books that I will explain later of a th kind of a third method. Um, but I'll just go quickly through a few of them. I didn't, haven't done the fourth book yet, but I have done, uh, uh, no, I haven't done the fifth book yet. Sorry. I've done four of them. So I will quickly go through them and just show you how I have arranged everything in the book. So the first one was the one I gutted and that was the, um, embroidery book. Okay. So I've, I've, I've got the book taken out of the spine and the spine is exposed and we will be uh, repairing the spine in another episode. And I went ahead and separated the pages. Let's see which order we're in here. Okay. So these were the pages that I am keeping for book page possibilities. Now, when I say book page possibilities, we're not going to be using all of them, which we will go through in, in the next uh, segment. Um, but they are possibilities of being book pages or plain ephemera bases. So I have the cover. I'm going to keep the front side of the cover because it looks nice. I will, you know, patch up where there's this price tag on here. Uh, where am I? Where's my finger? Oh, there it is. Okay. <laughs> I will patch up that little piece there and uh, keep this front cover. It, it will be a page in the book um, along with the inside of this as well as uh, part of the back side. Um, I will probably cover it up or just keep a small sliver of it and make it into another page or make another page out of it. But that is definitely going in the book as a book page. Um, as I said, I like to give some honor back to, to the uh, author and honor artists that created the book so wherever possible I like to include that stuff in it as well as copyright dates and stuff so these are the pages that don't make it as ephemera um, this will be a page in a book or somehow attached to a page in the book because I love how beautiful this picture is um, if it becomes a page in the book then I will be able to salvage this picture if not um, it will be cut out and I will lose that picture this one, just a plain page, a uh, plain page I don't like, another one I don't like. Um, this one could be a page in the book, but uh, again, I'll be very selective. Um, this one could be a page in the book. I would, um, I may leave the sampler in there or I may put something else in that, in that frame. This one is too ugly to be uh, a page like that. Um, so this will probably be a page that I use for ephemera, uh, as bases, not as finished ephemera, but as bases to work on. And, uh, this one as well, kind of not pictures I want to use. Uh, this one could go in the book, but not for sure. And so on and so forth. I'm just trying to find, this is a nice one that I could put in the book. Um, and I like this picture on the back side as well as this. So I could salvage this side, keep this picture and this for making a belly band. So we will get a little bit more selective in our pages, um, as we get further in this uh, series, but I just wanted to keep pages that I thought were more likely to be pages than ephemera. So uh, that's all of these pages here together. And then... And I'm not going to go through every single one because, you know, some of them are kind of boring um, and we don't need to look at them again. And then the next part was definitely ephemera. And you saw I showed you this, this um, end page and I said, you know, this would make, it's blank on the backside. It would make nice journaling cards or flip cards or, or tags or little notebooks. Oh, this would be such a cute little notebook, wouldn't it? Um, so this is definitely an ephemera. I'm just going to turn this the other way so I don't, uh, mix them up. Or maybe I'll just put it out of the way. 
Um, so, so definitely keeping that one. This one I thought I could fussy cut that bird out. Not that it would necessarily go in this book. Um, here's one I could fussy cut out and that could be a journaling card. Um, another one that could be fussy cut out and added onto something, you know, onto ephemera, onto a page. Uh, but the other side of the page was really cute too. I hope we're not getting too much glare here. A nice image. Uh, and a nice image. This could be an envelope, which is why I kept it aside. It's pretty. Could be an envelope, so ephemera. Another one that can be ephemera. I could I could either cut it out a little smaller, so I've just got the children's uh, faces in there, or I could fold it up in a variety of ways to use it as ephemera in the book. Nothing on the other side. Uh, I liked this little piece there. I thought it would be a great element or a tuck spot, and I could tie that in with part of this tablecloth that's on the same page. Um, so that's where I said ephemera. Um, not fond of that piece. Really liked this piece. I thought this could be cut out and would make a nice corner pocket on a page. And then this would be a nice little element on a page as well. Possibilities. Um, a nice uh, couple of ladies on this side, but I think I would lose them if I used the other side. Nice fussy cut piece, uh, a pretty picture of a, of a, um, little purse that's embroidered with that pattern on it. Could be used as ephemera. Um, nothing on the back side. Really loved this piece. Um, this to me just says fussy cut this out, add a, uh, a backing to it, and it would make a nice little tuck spot on a page, little page tuck. Mm, there's that B again. I don't know, it's haunting me that B, but it's not going to happen because it's right in the middle of this, and my preference is this over that. Uh, possible ephemera, could make another one of those little booklets. Nothing too exciting on that side. A couple of page elements. Nothing on that side. A possibility. Mm, I kind of like those better, and I like those little spot elements better, so I think I would go for that side of the page. Mm, another possibility, but there's three beautiful ones on this side. This is uh, very generic. I uh, hope you can see that. Whereas I like these ones better. They look more like uh, old tapestry embroideries uh, that could go in the book. That's nice. Mm questionable there's that cat we talked about and I said you know I could turn that into a little notebook um, a little spot element and an ugly page so I could I could cut out this little element and save the rest for ephemera mm, another possibility of a little notebook or a tag or some type of uh, envelope um, nothing too exciting on there this one we're keeping the whole thing so I guess I will get my B after all, uh, because this one I will turn into that, uh, I, I mentioned at the beginning was that three panel, um, sort of a brochure style of page or accordion page. And then this lovely lady, I will, uh, salvage her into some type of art within the book. So that is my separating method for, for this book. And then I have the second, uh, end page, uh, that I can also use for more ephemera in the book. So that is my sorting method and, and separation method for this one. And when we when we start putting the pages together, that's uh, the ephemera is going to be at the very end. Uh, but when we start putting the pages together, once that's done, you'll have a better idea of how you might use some of that ephemera in your book. So you saw that one. Oh, uh, one more thing was uh, I had kept these pages out because, again, this was a toss up. Um, it's a beautiful piece of ephemera that I can use. I know there's a glare and I'm sorry about that. Um, but there's a beautiful piece of ephemera here. There's a little flower I could cut out. Um, but there is this one too. Uh, I'm thinking this will win, um, but not sure. Depends on how the colors in the book are looking. Again, really like that. Mm, that's not too, too bad. This might be nice to have on a page where maybe I could have a tassel that would be would incorporate some of those colors. Um, so that was interesting to me, but I really like the, the, uh, ephemera on the back. So I have to make some decisions. Um, here, I really like these three ladies I'm trying to get it where there's no glare. 
Um, that just said um, really cute journal card. But the problem with that is on the back side was all of this beautiful stitching. So I have to think on those. And you're going to run into those situations too, where you have to think a little bit before you actually make those cuts. Um, so these three pages were my questionable pages. And as the book gets closer to being put together, that's when I will decide. So that's that one. The second one was my um, Guns of uh, Guns at Sea book. Oh, this is the antique book. Sorry, mixed them up. Where is it? Here it is. Sorry, just have to reach for it. All right, this is my Guns at Sea book. And this is the one where I took every four pages out and left the main page. And... Towards about halfway through the book, I realized there was a lot of ugly pages in here. So I started pulling out six, you know, eight at a time, cutting them out, realizing that I'm going to be putting pages in and uh, having less of these pages. But, you know, I kept mostly the ship ones, knowing that on the back side of the ship, I might have something ugly like this that I have to cover. Um, and that will be, you know, with all that extra space, I'll be able to do that. And then there's going to be some things that are questionable or I just left the page in knowing I'm going to fully decorate over top of it. So this one was pretty easy to do. Um, and one thing I hadn't mentioned and I should mention is that in cutting the pages out, I, I, I do stick to one, maybe two at most at the same time. If you go any more than that, uh, having uh, tried to cut out more at, all at once, you, you risk not cutting through all of them and then having to go back and redoing the cut. And then you risk shredding uh, these pages that are, are left inside your book. So try not to be in too big of a hurry. Do, you know, do one, maybe two if you're comfortable with the X-Acto blade and, and you've got a good grip and, and it's working, that's great. But try to stay with two because after that, as you get into three, four, or even more, you start shredding your pages because you're not putting the same pressure cutting through all the pages. And so you have to go back and that's where you slice back into the other pages. So uh, just a little caution there uh, and note to self. But yeah, so I, I did take out most of the pages in the book. So I have a good selection of what I'm calling... Um, uh, ephemera, you know, I may cut them up for different things as we get closer to working on this book. I will go through it a little bit more thoroughly, but um, you saw where I said, you know, the guns at sea, I really like this page and I thought I could, I could use it as a, uh, a fold out. This might be a good thing if you're gifting the books or or selling the books afterwards is to do your artist write up on, on the other side. A lot of people like to talk about what a junk journal is, or they talk about them, you know, they have a page about themselves and, and how they got started and, and that kind of thing. So this uh, brochure type of uh, page or pamphlet page that I would put into the book is, is what I would consider writing that stuff on if I know I'm going to sell it or give it away. Uh, but this was just my pile that I said more likely to be ephemera, not pages, because they were either nicer or they had elements on there that I could cut out. Um, and then even like this is such a beautiful picture. Um, in this case, I would use it as it is as a ship. Um, I've got it upside down for you. Uh, I would use it as it is uh, as a ship um, and maybe turn it into a tag. Um, but the rest of the page is still uh, a, a base for ephemera. So that's why this pile is more likely to be ephemera that's going into the book, whereas this is possibility of pages going back into the book. Now, when I say pages going back into the book, it's because um, I have lots of room. I, I really only have uh, 15 pages here. Uh, I cut back a lot of stuff. And... There are lots that I, there's no way I would use as pages in the book, but the, the possibility is there. If I want to insert some of them back in, I can, just gluing them back in. But most likely this will be used for ephemera for multiple books. I, I don't think it'll all go in this book. I think if anything, I will be adding different pages into here. Um, but there are some, some bits and pieces that I will use. So that's that book. 
So right now it's just about the cutting and kind of sorting your pages. Now this was my antiques, um, the world of antiques book. Same thing. I, I, um, took, gutted the whole book. I kept the book cover, uh, the book jacket, and I will work with that, uh, as a page within the book, uh, both sides. In this case, they are both nice. Um, so I will add them into the book. So these are the pages again, that are most likely to be ephemera which is now, this is the um, 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 end pages. This one is the back one. It had writing on it, but I, I would just uh, cover that up and use it differently. I had a lot of pages that have these elements on them um, that I found very interesting. So I thought I would cut them, fussy cut them out. That means that the rest of the page is salvageable for, for ephemera bases of some kind. Same with this one acknowledgements. It's not that I would use the whole word, but I just like the letter a, it may or may not get used within this book. Um, but they, I will fussy cut them out and this one conveniently is in the opposite corner, which is nice. Um, so I will fussy cut them out for the purpose of, um, using them somewhere. Uh, as elements. This was just a nice uh, page that I thought I could uh, cut up into tags or um, uh, some type of ephemera, but it also is a needlepoint. So this might end up going back in the embroidery book, which is interesting in itself because, you know, here it is in the antique book and I'm talking about putting it back in the other book. So keep those things in mind. You may have uses for other things. Now on the other side of this is a beautiful map. Um, Maybe I'm only going to use half of it as a, as a note card and use the, the, uh, map as part of my, you know, making a tag or another note card. Cause I can easily uh, fold this into half. Another interesting map, but on this side is all, uh, candle, uh, not candlesticks, um, chess game pieces. And I thought, oh, wouldn't this be interesting to put in an Alice in Wonderland book? Um, so this might get filed, uh, in another pile eventually. And uh, again, elements, uh, pictures that I found interesting that I thought could be cut up for ephemera. Again, antique book, and here's a ship. So this might end up going in my, my ship um, uh, booklet uh, or uh, of the sea bo booklet. So um, I, I'm, that's in the back of my mind, but there are some interesting black and white images here that could be cut out. So depending on how it works as to how I cut them out. Um, clock pictures and watch pictures. I just thought, you know, maybe I would use this again as one of those things that I, uh, multi-layer and then cut fussy, cut it out and use it as a, as a charm kind of thing. Or I could put another picture in here instead of this, these pictures that are in here already. So uh, again, as we go along, another, another element that could be cut out. Uh, the clocks, I, you know, they're kind of on the back burner. Do I fussy cut them and save them for other projects? Not sure. This would make a really cool belly band in the book though, wouldn't it? Um, so that's a possibility. Two more long ones that would make great belly bands within the book. So you have to constantly look at the pictures and think of the, you know, maybe make yourself a list of elements that you might use like envelopes, tags, note cards, journal cards, folded cards, belly bands, uh, side pockets, pocket tucks. These are all things that you might consider using in your book. So keep that in mind when you're looking at the images is how you can use it as ephemera in your book and yeah, envelopes, especially wouldn't use that one, but mainly because there's uh, two really nice colored ones here that I would use. Uh, this one was very interesting to me. I thought it would make a really cute page or an, um, an envelope, but when I turned it over, I really like this, um, element here. And then as it turns out, this page, I believe is the back of this. Yes. So I'm going to keep this one for a page in the book and cut this one up. And then if I cut off this part here, I get to take advantage of that and still keep the clock or, or the, the element. So again, do some thinking, uh, before you start cutting as to how you might use it. This piece is very interesting to me because it, it will fussy cut, cut out really fun. Um, it could be folded in half to make a kind of a taco uh, 
<laughs> like a half moon <laughs> a note notebook that would fit into a journal. I just thought that was pretty interesting. So again, always think about it. Nothing here too exciting. I would have cut this out if this hadn't been. This is my first choice. Um, this um, coffee urn and the candlesticks may not use them in this book, although they do fall under the antiques. Um, nothing here that was too exciting, but they are kind of large, so I'm, I'm not sure. Um, we'll see. Another element. But I did like all of these uh, spot pieces. I just thought they would make some fun tags. Um, I could see myself uh, coloring them a little bit, ink staining, and, and maybe doing some uh, embellishing on top. There's one piece I hope I still have it handy that I can show you. Uh, another great uh, frame. I would get rid of that picture. He's not my favorite guy. <laughs> but I would put something else in there and fussy cut it out. Um, nothing there that's exciting. Love the teacup, but is it is it an antique or is it an Alice thing? I'm not sure. Um, nothing too exciting there. Another one that could go into an Alice in Wonderland book. Uh, you know, this is the um, Wedgwood Blue, so that would be something that might uh, look nice in one of the books. This one uh, threw me a little bit. I looked at it and said, not going to happen as a page, but it could happen as um, as a envelope. I think, or possibly as a long notebook, um, might be a little strange with that on it. Um, but yeah, I'll, I just couldn't quite mm, decide on this one yet. So it's just here, nothing that fancy on the other side. Um, I would fussy cut this out, whether I use it in this book, not sure. Um, but then I did like this. So I said, Hmm, this again would make a really cute little, uh, oval, folded in half notebook so not sure another one that is questionable nothing exciting on the other side so this just gives you some ideas I'm not going to go through all of this because uh, I'm sure you're already getting oh no I do want to find one page in particular I'll just quickly look for it okay this one I told you I was thinking I would put a mirror in there uh, like a not necessarily a real mirror but like a uh, a piece of metal that, uh, or very shiny metallic that would sort of reflect a little bit. Um, that's a possibility. But if I can find the one I'm thinking about, I don't know if it's here, if it's in my, it might be in the pages. Okay, so that was all the ones that I held aside for ephemera possibilities. And then in this section was the pages that are possible pages, but definitely if it's not a page, it's going to get cut up. So it's not ephemera. If anything, it's ephemera bases. Does that make sense? Not going to use that as a page. Um, not going to go through them too seriously. Although this one was really nice. I really like this one. Um, on the other side of this one, so this could definitely be a page because we've got the antique room here on the one side, and on the other side we have different antique shops, which I found very interesting. Um, just trying to find some... This one again, um, it's chess pieces. I thought this would be nice in an Alice book. So some of them get put aside, definitely. Love that one for this book. Um... This was an interesting page as well. It's all different uh, drawer pulls. I think I have a lot of these. They all look familiar. Uh, sorry, I don't want to spend too much time on this. Um, some interesting elements here that could be cut out. A full-size picture. Love this one. This is definitely going to be a page in the book. Doesn't that just say antiques right there? Kind of a bizarre type of book. Uh, here we go. This one. Now this one is definitely going to be a page in the book. And here's why. One, it, it is an antique. Um, it is an interesting page. Um, there's some, just some basic decorative elements there that would stay on the bottom on that page. I could easily cover that with something that is more journal friendly. But I just thought, oh, all that bling that we have, if I glued some fancy rhinestones and half pearls, you know those flat back pearls that we get for scrapbooking and the flat back bling? If I glued those all over this page, wouldn't that make a 
gorgeous journal page. Um, I, so that is something I will consider playing, uh, playing on. And, um, it might be a great way to use up those bottles of stickles and, uh, you know, glitter glue that we have all kinds of dimensional glues. So I will, I will play with this page and see what I can come up with. That was the one I wanted to show you. <laughs> so the rest, again, I will show you more as we get into putting the books together and doing the actual pages. And so that one was gutted uh, and will be rebuilt. The um, book under here has not yet been done. That will be my last book. And this one will also be gutted. Um, it's Victorian Crafts. There is nothing spectacular in here. There's maybe one or two pages that I would keep uh, for the book. So I'm going to gut the whole thing and, and rebuild it from the, the cover up. Um, so that one will be completely pulled out of the book. And then this one, this one really threw me and I've never had this happen. Uh, I've had it happen in a little tiny, but, but this book, um, it's called a passion for ribbonry. And I ended up, I, I took out the whole first half of the book. I just took the whole thing out. And I'll show you the pictures, but it was nothing that exciting. And I think I will use all of what I took out for ephemera, whether it's for this book or for another book. And I will put in all kinds of blank pages um, of my own. Uh, some coffee dyed, tea dyed, some avocado dyed papers, maybe some fancier journal papers. But I will look for things that are sort of ribbon related. This is where totally by accident, I might use a couple of fabric swatch cards. Remember I showed you how I made those uh, framed swatches. So I might do that for this ribbon book because it is a book about ribbon. And the whole back half of the book is instructions on how to make different flowers out of ribbon. So I thought, you know, this book I'm going to keep for myself. I hadn't looked at it that closely when I bought it. Um, you know, I was looking at the elements, not thinking about the instructions, but the instructions are all here, how to make these different flowers. So look out for some upcoming tutorials that we will be working on. Um, but, but I just found that it was so interesting, all the different flowers that you can make um, out of this book, and, and all out of ribbon. So I kept the instructions for the back half. For the front half, I, I took all the pages out, and so now I will insert my own pages. I'm not going to get that many in here because there's not a lot of room, maybe 10 pages at best, and I will keep it more as a, a journaling notebook with some swatches. I may add a few swatches on these page, but pages, but I'm concerned because there's not a lot of room. So uh, I won't be able to add a lot of bulk in here, um, but I will add some. And, you know, I kept the front and back end pages because they were, they were very neutral. There was nothing written on them. And I thought, you know, they would be great for making notes at the back of the book. And at the back of the book, I think I was able to take out two pages. Yeah, two pages in total. So there's not much, again, that I can write on uh, or work with at the back. So, so this is more going to be um, a little booklet for me, I think. Um, not crazy about the cover here, so I will probably use the cover uh, to add things onto. And um, I have talked about this very briefly, but for all five of these books, my plan is to make a second, because they're small, to make a second journal that will sit within the the uh, edges of this journal. So I would decorate or we will decorate them if you j decide you want to do that and then have a second separate journal on top. So that's where I will, I'm excited to do that for this book because I will not get a lot of room inside to work with. So keep that in mind for yourself too. And maybe you picked up a book and you say, oh, I can't cut these pages out because they're all beautiful. Well, you know, maybe consider doing the same thing where you cut half out and keep the other half and then look at building the book a little bit differently another way. So either adding on top on the outside or adding a file folder on the inside where we talked about folios um, of some sort to put on the inside. But it depends on how much room you have. So that's that with this book. I will again uh, somehow use part of this. I might cut it down to here and, and use part of this imagery 
in the book as a page or as ephemera. Um, and I want to keep something about the author in the book. Uh, so, so I'll have to figure that out. But just to give you a quick rundown of the pages that were inside. I mean, they're beautiful. I will use them as ephemera, whether it's for the book or whether it's for somewhere else. Like this is a very pretty picture, a uh, floral picture. Um, plain, you know, again, pretty that can be used for um, ephemera envelopes or notebooks. So there's, there is a, a little bit of option, not a lot, because I didn't take that many pages out. So, like I said, at best, I can probably put about eight pages back in. And um, just giving you a quick flip through of the pages to see what was here. That's a very pretty one. That would make a beautiful envelope uh, of sorts. And, you know, when I make an envelope using something that like this, because it's a ribbon book, if it's going back in, I will incorporate ribbons in this color into the page once it's folded into an envelope by, by decorating you know, with ribbon. So, so, you know, it would have a band of ribbon or a cluster of ribbons or some shabby stuff on it. Um, but either way, uh, I will incorporate the ribbons of the, uh, of the book back into, to, uh, these pages that I use. So, so there are some pretty ones. Um, this one was interesting. It's kind of a storefront, like a haberdashy or written, they call it a ribbonry. Um, it's an interesting page, but, uh, I'm not sure if I'll use it or not. Nice framed ribbon piece. I hope you can see these. I do love this garden path. It has no real relation to me in the book other than the fact that they made flowers from, uh, ribbon flowers from flowers, but, or, or to resemble flowers. But I just thought it was such a nice garden path to go in maybe another journal um, where you could have something walking down the path. Um, and then it was at the beginning of the book, it was a lot of introduction. So there really wasn't much at the beginning that I wanted to keep. Love these two little cards. Uh, again, they could be spot elements on pages or uh, little uh, artist trading cards. They're about the same size. I have a card here. Yeah, not, not far out from being an artist trading card. Loved her too. I hope you can see her. Yeah. Um, this made me think of washi tape right away. So I would have a page where I would add in maybe a journal page that is just made of washi tape. And then some of those washi tape strips could be added back into the original book on the pages, as long as it doesn't take up too much bulk. But that's what I was um, reminded of there. And here it's a passion for ribbonry. I love the words, love the little image. Um, so lots of possibility, but I liked her too. And I like the frame. So I'm kind of stuck. Um, I don't think I can have, I have to make a choice of one or the other. So yeah, another cute little spot element. Um, nothing there. Uh, another full size picture that can be used for an envelope. Another one. She seemed to really have a lot of florals at the beginning of the book. I found this very interesting. Um, this might be good to use as um, you know, kind of sort of a washy kind of swatch, um, that I could put with some, some ribbons that I, I, um, match up with it or samplers. I found that interesting, or it could be a little, little booklet, um, in the front that has all the different ribbons in it. And so that's something to consider and work on. Uh, cute flowers. I would, fussy cut those out may not end up in this book, but, um, it's still a really cute element for another book. And here's another image of that ribbonry. So that's a possibility. And here's another image of that storefront. So that's a possibility as well. Um, so there, um, you kind of get the idea. I'm not going to go too much more into detail. It's just simple pages that we'll, we will see later on in the, in the, uh, in the series as we go along. So this is part two of part one. So I'm calling it part one and part two, and that's it. Uh, you're going to get them both aired uh, for Monday. And uh, we will continue on uh, January 23rd, which will be a week away. That's when we will start putting the pages together and the possibly the book. But I'm going to say we're going to stick with the pages for now. Uh, if we have time, we'll do the book, the hardcover book itself. 
Um, but that'll be our next focus. So for this week, your homework is to gut your book and kind of very loosely decide on what pieces you want to be making into ephemera and what pieces you want to use for pages. Um, we will be putting pages together and uh, binding them with a seam in between or doing a kind of a fold to fold the one page into another. Um, so that'll be fun. Um, for those of you that are more advanced, of course, you can go ahead and make some of your ephemera. You know what you like and you, you know what you're going to put in your books. Uh, and some of you won't wait for me. Some of you will go on and, and do some of the parts as well. I hope you'll wait because I have different tips and ideas and things to show you as we go along. Uh, but uh, certainly ephemera is, is uh, what you like to use. And if, if you have time and, and want to jump ahead and do some of your ephemera, by all means, go ahead. Um, but otherwise, uh, these are your two parts and your job is to take apart your book and at least loosely decide what's ephemera and what's uh, pages and, and possible absolutely um, basis for ephemera. So it's kind of like three different sections. And then um, I will see you on January 23rd for the next episode. That's it for today. I wish you all a very creative day and a creative week. Please let me know in the comments below how you feel about this so far. And uh, I will see you all soon. Bye for now.